Asus and Nvidia Studio sent me two laptops to check out. Each one has a little bit of a different flavor of who they're meant for. So meet the ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED and the ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. The ZenBook comes with two 4K OLED touchscreen displays. It has a stylus and it has more power than any laptop I've ever used. The StudioBook, on the other hand, has a larger, larger aspect ratio and just bigger 4K OLED display. It's not touchscreen, but it has a three button trackpad, which is huge for 3D, and it has the Asus dial, which we'll talk more about later. This video is sponsored by Asus and Nvidia Studio, and while they did send me the computers, every thought and opinion I give and review on these computers is my own honest opinion. But in theory, they should be able to handle anything we can throw at them, animation, visual effects, video editing, and so on. I thought it'd be fun to do a video seeing some use case examples of what you might do with a laptop with two screens or the Asus dial. Though there is a big question for a lot of people of whether you should be buying a laptop or going with a desktop computer for this type of work. And there are really good arguments to go either direction. There's no right or wrong answer. On the desktop side, of course, you can upgrade or buy individual components, sometimes on sale, so cost effectiveness can be really helpful. But on the other hand, laptops are mobile. You can move around, whether it's in your house, going to work, going to school, whatever the case may be. Some people just need to be flexible with their living situations and not carry a big tower and monitor back and forth everywhere they go. Whatever the reason, some people can't get by with a desktop. It's just not an option for them, or in some cases, you might need both. So the takeaway there is that you're aiming for an NVIDIA Studio laptop, regardless of what laptop you're after, period. NVIDIA Studio laptops pair RTX GPUs with their Studio drivers to power creative software and AI-assisted tools that take your ideas from concept to completion faster. Particularly when it comes to rendering, exporting videos, AI artwork, gaming, things like that. And there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to AI and creative tools, but we'll save that for another video. Get subscribed. Let's look at each laptop one at a time and then compare them at the end. The ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED. To me, this is one of the most interesting laptops that exists right now. When I originally got the email that Asus wanted to work with me and send me laptops, and it was this laptop they wanted to send me, I was so excited because I am just genuinely excited about the existence of this computer. I'm super spoiled when it comes to working on multiple displays. I have a really hard time at this point not working on multiple displays because I'm so used to it. It is what it is. And so this is a huge plus. Being able to put the graph editor or put the hypershade or you know whatever it is you're doing, depending on the software, Maya, Blender, Unreal, I have tried all kinds of different combinations to try and put interesting stuff on the bottom to make use of these screens, and it actually works really well. I didn't think I'd care about the touchscreens as much as I do, but I actually really like the touchscreens. That's been really nice, although having the second screen does squash the keyboard and trackpad quite a bit. They're not super ergonomic and it's a little uncomfortable, so they give you this little plastic thing that goes like that. So on one hand, cool, you have something to rest your wrists on. On the other hand, it is another thing to carry around, and I often forget it. Ultimately, you're going to want to use a mouse most of the time when you're using this laptop. Something kind of funny is I actually have an old model of this computer that we've had for a couple of years. This is the, I think maybe the original ZenBook Pro Duo, and you can see the screen now tilts up off the kind of the keyboard level. Fun little fact, if you happen to have ever used the old one, the new one, has some nice improvements. And the stylus is something I was super curious about. It does work on the top and the bottom screens, which is great. Has solid pressure sensitivity, though if you are thinking of using this as a graphics tablet replacement, you're probably still going to want to use the external graphics tablet if you have one. If you're doing high detail artwork, 2D animation, anything where you're looking for that really, really snappy response, this has a fast enough response rate for most people, like your average user is going to really enjoy it. You can use it for annotations, general note taking, animation critiques and feedback is going to work just fine. But if you are doing high detail stuff or 2D animation, quick motions, it doesn't have the same feel of a professional, like, artist tablet. I'd also love to see a future version of the stylus with no battery, better remappable buttons. It's currently using like the Windows system stuff and an eraser on the back. I don't want to have to use a button for an eraser. I love just flipping it around, hitting it that way. So it's gonna be very workflow dependent on whether this is a game changer for you. If you've never had a tablet before, this would be really nice. If you already have one, you probably won't use this one as much. But where this laptop really shines is performance and speed. This thing is powerful. I'll throw up some Blender benchmarks because that's always a good thing to show. Something that's actually really cool is unlike like a desktop computer where you have to know kind of how to go into the BIOS and change different settings to overclock your fans or your CPUs. Both of these laptops have the ProArt Creator Hub dashboard, this software built in that Asus provides that shows you what's in your computer, how much is being used, the temperature, the frequency of the CPU, all these different stats. There's just a couple of buttons for standard mode, performance mode, full speed mode in this case. Now this exact model has an Intel processor and Maya, in my experience, seems to have a really nice time with Intel processors because Maya doesn't really use multi-threading and that kind of stuff. It just cares about clock speed. This is gonna have a really smooth experience animating in Maya, no viewport stuttering or anything like that. 
And because of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 in there, you're gonna get eight gigs of VRAM to use for cache playback or just to put towards rendering power in Maya Blender, Unreal, whatever it is you're doing. It's gonna fly. Now the HDR OLED 4K touchscreen displays, these are gonna give you some really nice color accuracy for anything you may be watching or creating. That's gonna be great for 3D lighting as a good example or texturing. They'll be warned, it's a little bit heavy. The I.O. is fairly diverse. You have an HDMI port, which is, I think, 2.1, which I believe is 8K, 120 frames per second. And I don't know if I mentioned, but the trackpad has this little calculator feature, which is kind of interesting. When you hit it, it turns into a little numpad calculator. This exact model has a price tag of $28.99. Fun fact, this video took almost three and a half months to make, so please hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks. The ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED is definitely a laptop built for the creative process. Something completely unrelated to any of that is it has a little webcam cover, which I didn't want to forget to mention because I actually really like that little feature. But it has a 16 inch display, which is big, but not too big. It's the perfect screen size to have more real estate, especially because it has a taller aspect ratio, 16 by 10 instead of 16 by nine. And the HDMI out is 2.1, meaning 8K output at 120 Hertz, which gives you a lot of options for a second display. For visual effects, it's a really strong contender. It has a three button trackpad, which is one of my favorite features about it. I didn't think I was gonna care as much as I did, but I do. Having the three button trackpad means you don't have to use a mouse. I've always had to use a mouse for every laptop I've ever used until now. It makes it an actually viable option that I would have killed for when I was in animation school. Inside the GPU is an NVIDIA RTX A2000, which is a studio optimized card with a lower power consumption. The benchmarks will show this to be an extremely capable card. It's not the fastest out there, but it's nothing to scoff at. And a few notable additions for any creators out there, if you are working with footage, VFX, things like that, you have an SD card reader. That's huge. I've been there where you don't have the stupid dongle and you just can't work on your project. Someone asked if it has the Kensington lock. It does. It also has two USB-Cs and threes. The power plug is in kind of a weird spot. It's right here in the middle. I don't really know why. Uh, you got a lot of fan cooling on the sides. In all the modes, the fans are pretty much silent most of the time. But if you want to hear an example of how loud the fans can get if you go to full speed mode, I'll crank this and we'll just hear some quick laptop ASMR. That is a jet engine and you have control over that. Now, overall performance is great. This particular model has an AMD Ryzen 9, which means it's really good at multi-threading optimized workflows and applications. So the Adobe apps are gonna benefit from that. Rendering in Blender, for example. Animating in Maya, you're not gonna get any extra perks because Maya doesn't really know what to do with all those threads. So it just doesn't. But apps like After Effects, DaVinci, Blender, you're gonna see some benefits. Same with if you're streaming or something, for example. The fancy thing on the StudioBook is the Asus dial. It's a little rotary dial. You can feel the little soft tactile clicks as you go around and you can press it in. And if I'm being honest, I have some mixed thoughts about it. I'm Sir Wade from the future. When I first filmed this video, I had originally said that I had some mixed thoughts about the Asus dial because I thought that for Adobe applications and other supported apps, you had all kinds of cool functionalities and things you could do, but that for 3D applications, Maya Blender and so on, that you couldn't really do much. At the time, I hadn't found that the settings just live in the creator hub. The difference between supported and unsupported applications is that in the Adobe apps, a lot of the, the functions and the features of the software are just listed in there as things you can toggle on and off as I want these in the dial, cycle layer, brush size, whatever. Whereas any unsupported application, you just have to manually set up the hotkey and then make that a keyboard shortcut in the software. So now knowing what I know, the Asus dial works just fine for all software, which is cool. It's not like a game changer that's gonna completely revolutionize the way you work. It's just a nice addition to your workflow if you don't have something like this already. For example, if you're animating and you wanna step through your keys, that's a cool use for it. Or if you were in Blender modeling and you wanted to expand or decrease the selection size of how many faces you've got, things like that. But I'm sure you'll come up with your own examples. Back from the future. Overall, it's a really good laptop. It's probably my top recommendation for 3D and VFX, especially if you're on the go. It's a lot of fun to use. I really just like the size, weight, form factor. The three button trackpad is a really big deal. The perfect size, not too heavy. I really like it. This exact model is priced at $24.99. I think it's a great mobile workstation, especially if you're trying to do work while commuting. All that's left is to briefly compare the two. Now, if Asus is taking any ideas or design requests from me, my thing would be to combine these two laptops. That'd be like the perfect computer. The two screens here, maybe make this a professional drawing tablet. Give me the three button trackpad, take the dial. Maybe also give me a few, you know, programmable hotkey buttons built into the laptop. That'd be perfect and I'd never need another laptop. But as they are now, here are my thoughts. I would say for any power users looking for performance and speed, the ZenBook's probably the one for you if you don't mind doing most of your work 
not on the go, but once you get to where you've gone. Because you're gonna wanna use a mouse every time you use it, I'm not a huge fan of the kind of cramped trackpad. It's a little small, I have kind of big hands. But if you are looking for something to do more work actually on the laptop form factor, this is probably what I would recommend. I actually really, really like this computer. It's probably the most fun laptop experience-wise that I've messed with in years. You don't necessarily need a mouse because you got your three buttons right there. Speakers on this, I don't know if I mentioned, are actually really nice. Speakers are less nice on here. I'd use headphones using this one. I wouldn't really need headphones on that one. So yeah, power users work on it when you get there. This one, you can use it on the go and it's still super powerful. It's just not quite as fast as this one. So if you're in the market for a new laptop, I would honestly recommend checking out the Asus Creator Laptops. They are doing really cool stuff. They're innovating, they're trying new things. I'm a big fan of what they're doing. And since these are NVIDIA Studio laptops, they can handle everything you wanna throw at them. A huge thanks to Asus and NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment something interesting down below, thoughts about laptops, whatever. This video took me literally months to make. So some kind of engagement on this video would be massively appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and a huge thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.